I have the privilege of being the Director of Career Development and Experiential Learning here at Memorial. And one of the areas that is under career development is this uh, whole belief and support for experiential learning, both curricular and co-curricular. So we provide a number of services uh, for faculty who wish to uh, have some type of uh, engaging piece of their course that involves maybe community service and tying it back to the curriculum. And we can provide a lot of assistance with that uh, for someone who's thinking about doing it. But what we talked about when Kelly and I talked about doing this uh, presentation was we should probably let you know that it is very much based in a theoretical framework. And if you're in this room, you probably have some idea about experiential education, whether it's through co-op, whether it's through service, volunteerism, um, those sorts of things. And you probably know a little bit about it, but we thought that we would uh, just let you know that it is very much based in theory. Uh, back in uh, the early 1900s, uh, John Dewey, I believe it was 1938, he came out with really the first theory around experiential education. But at Memorial, uh, particularly in career development, the theory that we have used uh, often is Kolb's experiential learning uh, theory. And this cycle of basically uh, what, so what, now what. And, and helping the students go through that process of experiencing something, reflecting on it, and then incorporating that into their psyche and how they go forward into the world uh, and, and providing those opportunities for students to transform uh, them through their educational uh, experience. Uh, so I won't spend a lot of time on the theory, but you can see that it's you know the concrete experience, it's the abstract reflective piece, then applying it and then basically that change occurs. So if you're not familiar with Kolb, he's quite popular and uh, you can look into him a little bit more, but that's the one that we uh, tend to use a lot. You'll see some pictures throughout the presentation of events, uh, uh, service learning, experiential events that we have had in the last few years. Uh, and some of these, like I said, have been uh, um, used within classes and some of them have been part of Community Service Day, which is part of Make Midterm Matter. Uh, and also we have um, the Community Service Day, which is part of I Love Mondays and we have an event every midterm break where we get students engaged with our community uh, and do a lot of reflection around that and that's been really great to be part of to actually see the learning that's occurring with the students. So what's happening on campus is basically we, we provide support for curricular and co-curricular experiential education. We know that there's a lot of people like Kelly out there that are already doing great things in the classroom but if you're a professor or, or somebody who's uh, thinking about doing something with your classes that involves this and are not sure of the next steps, then we're here to provide that support for you. And these are just some of the current and past community partners that we've had in just the last few years. And uh, even this next week, midterm break I believe is next week, and uh, we will be sending, uh, oh, what's our cap on that penny? About, about 80 students will be going out to long-term care homes in the in the, with Eastern Health. And uh, we have social work classes involved with that, and then just students who want to do service over their midterm break, uh, and they'll be going out to do work in the long-term care homes. But these are just some of the uh, some of the groups that we've been involved with. Uh, it's been quite rewarding, uh, for sure, and to hear what the students have to say, and you're going to hear from some students, which is spectacular from a, a curricular uh, point of view. But I mean, when I think back, and this is when I get excited, so forgive my stories, but I have a couple. And you know, when I think back to, your, to my learning and the most engaged that I was, it was different. It was different. It was, it was not just you know, learn off something and regurgitate it back on a test. It, it, was, it was taking me outside of uh, what you were comfortable with, taking me outside the classroom. And when I think back to uh, my 40 undergraduate courses at Memorial, there's two that stands out in particular. But one of them was a developmental psychology course, and that professor, uh, it was child development, and he actually got us to go to uh, Monday care and to go to daybreak and, and observe children and, and different developmental uh, stages. And it was the first time that I think I had been taken outside the classroom to apply what I was learning in that big textbook to real life. And it was the first time that I had ever realized that there were uh, children that came from lower socioeconomic families 
that needed to be given milk every week. It was the first time, I mean, it was, it was phenomenal experience. Those, I still remember those children running up and the attention that they wanted. But when I think back of what I got from it, I, d I could see the difference in some ways between the facilities. I could see the needs were different in some cases from the children that were involved in both uh, centers. And I was able to come back and see how socioeconomic uh, status actually impacted sometimes on child development. And that was very powerful. That was very powerful. I think it was a great example of experiential learning. We did reflection on it. And, and it, was, uh, it was, like I said, uh, an opportunity for me to see something that I was actually learning. Very, very easy example of how a faculty member did things just a little bit different. But 20 years later, I remember that. Uh, and it stands out. So there's lots of ways, I think, that we can be doing creative things. There's supports there in the classroom to really engage the learner and get them excited about what they're learning, whether it's doing soil samples in a chemistry class to a child development uh, uh, psychology course. And I'm just going to leave my piece there for now and pass it over to Kelly, who's been doing phenomenal exciting stuff with students for the last five years. So uh, my background, as you heard, is in uh, community development, really, in sustainable community development, community involvement and resource management uh, as a geographer and, and now in environmental policy. One of the classes that I teach is Geography 3350, which is community and regional planning and development. And actually, that class is offered both uh, on the St. John's campus in geography and in, at the Grenfell campus. And I asked uh, two students who have uh, been part of that class and, ex and experienced the uh, engagement in the classroom to join me, Jennifer Daniels and Patrick Levesque, and they're going to tell you specifically about the projects that they did as part of that class in 2009 and 2012. Uh, but the idea behind the course is to introduce students to a range of different theories, techniques, and approaches. So there's skills elements, sort of practical skills that, that students are uh, to take away from the course, as well as theories uh, related to development and also, you know, constantly trying to look at the relationship between theory and practice. And, uh, and there have been a range of um, people that have taken part in the class, practitioners who may be coming back for a certificate program that we have in regional development, uh, as well as, as geography students who are, who are working their way through the geography stream. So it, it's a, it, it meets the needs of a range of different types of students and has uh, a real um, applied as well as, uh, as more theory-based uh, range of content in the course. So uh, I think I'll just pass it over to, uh, to Jennifer and Patrick and you'll get a real flavor for the, the, kind of the way that the, uh, really the, the term project is uh, integrated into the course and, and helps to cover the content of the course, which I can tell you a little bit about later. So I came into the geography department in 2008 and in 2009 I started up my third year and one of the courses I took was uh, Dr. Vaden's Community and Regional Development and Planning course and the project that she had developed um, in this course was um, was with three regional, or excuse me, with the four regional stakeholders that you see there, the Rural Secretariat, uh, the Kitty Wake Economic Development Corporation, the Red Bee for Gander New West Valley, um, in Innovation, Business, and Rural Development, and ACOA. And so the project took place in Gander New West Valley here in central Newfoundland, um, also known as the Kitty Wake, Kitty Wake region. And um, basically along with, uh, before the class commenced, Along with the, the steering committee, which included Dr. Vauden and, and the regional partners here, there was a, a developed, um, they, they got a sense that there was a need for our research project. In particular, what they were looking at is, looking at is they got a sense that it was very, um, well, it was relatively easy for communities and subregions within this area to, uh, to get resources for doing planning, the act of planning, but it was much more difficult to secure resources for implementation of these plans. So we then termed this the uh, implementation gap and so as a class um, what we were tasked to do was to look at um, look at how communities involved in this type of planning what kind of critical successes they were having and what kind of barriers um, they had towards Im implementing their plans and so we had um, and as, as a part of the project, we also put forth recommendations to various stakeholders, so government, the communities themselves, as well as planners involved in the process as to um, how to approach these issues. So the, the folks that were involved um, 
were from various uh, regions, which I will call subregions, multiple communities that had gotten together and were engaged in particular planning processes, as well as uh, one single community that's tilting. So the region here, for those not familiar, includes um, Fogo and Change Islands all around uh, to Twillingate and then back down to Gander Bay and that loop there. So there were three phases to this project. The first phase, phase one, um, was, the, was the classroom, the class project itself. So what we did at this um, stage is that we, we got onto various databases, including community counts, and we made regional profiles for each of these subregions and municipalities who had been engaged in the planning process. And um, what we did later in the semester is the steering committee had set up a workshop in, that took place in Gander. So we, keen students, went out on our midterm and decided that we'd go to a workshop and have whiteboards and we'd talk about what was going on. And um, at that workshop, we also got a chance to interview people in a, in a focus group kind of setting. And uh, the interviews were developed through Kelly and the steering committee to get a sense of, as I suggested, the successes and challenges that people were facing. And um, after, after the workshop, we also conducted interviews after the fact once we got back to St. John's. And there were seven documents, regional planning reports, developed through that class. And it was a class of, I think, 20 people, roughly. So we grouped off and we each had our report to do. Phase two um, provided research assistant employment for three of us from the class where we did a, a cross analysis. So a comparative study of all seven of the reports that we had um, developed in the class. And so phase two consisted from the next semester, so the winter semester, January to April, we conducted this comparative piece and now it has become a document called Beyond the Document where it structures the ideas to get planning moving and not just this static dusty document which had been dubbed from one of the workshops. So we, um, we generated Beyond the Document looking at the successes and particularly focusing on recommendations towards good practices that were emerging. and. Um, at the phase two, at the end of phase two, we had a regional, another workshop in Gander where various people had suggested that perhaps we launch into a phase three. And so what that involved was a provincial survey of regional planners. So um, we put up the survey and uh, they commented on the what uh, had emerged from beyond the document. So at this in this process, they ranked the various recommendations in terms of their relevancy and priorities for the province as a whole, really. And so from that, um, we've had various knowledge mobilization efforts, which have ranged from professional conferences and webcasts to academic conferences, as well as um, posters, future research um, projects that myself and Dr. Vaughan have been involved in, as well as my research interests that extended on to my master's. And um, another thing that we will be doing emerging from this project is a presentation on pedagogy and engagement, which will uh, occur at the CU Expo in Cornerbrook this coming June. So the outputs I have reiterated in the previous slide there. The successes, good fact, the good practices, challenges and recommendations, and the various uh, other outputs. And um, I wanted to make a comment here on what this process meant to me as a student going through it, and it, it, it did have a way of making, um, making real my learning experience. And what I mean by this is you were outside of your room studying with your books, you're out engaging with people and seeing how these types of principles and these types of knowledges we're working with really do have an effect on people's lives. So um, let's not take that for granted as an undergrad student or any student or any researcher. Um, the relationships that were uh, evolved from this project were crucial for me in terms of my um, trajectory of getting into my master's research and doing my own project in, in the region. But I think, um, aside from me personally, I think it's important that these relationships, the relationships that I developed helped crystallize a greater sense of responsibility and accountability for um, the information that I was learning. And, and I think this is 
uh, definitely an important uh, lesson for community-based research in general, but uh, also applies, or specifically, but also applies to um, academic learning more generally. And um, another factor was just coming from away and, and taking my undergrad here. Um, this experience got to, got to um, allowed me to experience uh, rural rural Newfoundland and see more of the rural context and, and why that's important for future engagement projects. So I will pass it on to Patrick now. Good afternoon. Um, I was also in the uh, Geography 3350 class, but uh, uh, just last fall, and. Um, Although it wasn't Kelly teaching it then, it was certainly uh, certainly incorporated a lot of the same uh, aspects as when Kelly taught it previously. Um, so uh, we still we also had a, um, a class project in, in that, um, similarly to uh, the one Jen just described. Um, the project we were involved with was. Um, this one up here uh, is the land use planning in uh, the Grand Falls, Windsor, Bayvert, Harbor, Breton region. And if you're not familiar with that, well, first of all, we call it Central West for short because that's a mouthful. Um, it covers uh, the Bayvert Peninsula um, down as far east as the Kitty Wake region that we saw from the previous example and down through central uh, Grand Falls exploits region and down to uh, the coast of Bays. So it's a large, large area. It's the largest um, region of the Rural Secretariat in the province. Um, uh, the Rural Secretariat is one of the, uh, the partners on the project, as well as uh, municipalities NL and, um, and well, MUN uh, through us. Um, so the project consisted of uh, a few different phases, kind of similar to the, the previous one, I guess. Um, the first part was the uh, informant interviews. Now, this was done um, before it got to the class stage. The class was involved mainly in phase two, which was uh, completing case studies. So what we did um, as part of the class was um, First of all, through the, the key informant interviews, several um, main areas of interest with, uh, with regard to land use were identified. So we took these and uh, looked in other jurisdictions for examples of either things to do, good examples, or uh, also things not to do, examples where things didn't go so well. Um, um, so we did this, uh, and part of the interesting part of it was that we were in regular contact with um, with uh, the partners, in particular with the rural secretariat and with uh, community members as well. So they really helped us guide uh, the direction of, of our research. Um, and um, my particular group, um, uh, I looked at uh, issues of access to crown land in these areas, and um, that's uh, you know itself can be a, f uh, a broad enough topic, but through these uh, through talking with these people, we figured out what was really important to this region, and so it really gave us a, a much stronger sense of being connected to this to this work, and um, it was really a good way to I guess uh, make the work more relevant. Um, so uh, the case studies, uh, w they were done uh, in groups. So um, it's group work, as anyone who uh, teaches or has uh, studied um, using group work, you knows there's, there's good aspects and there's bad aspects. But either way, it's a good learning experience to what the real world might be like. You know, It's rare to work in a vacuum, I guess. And just in, in general, I guess, uh, the case studies were a good way for us to apply the theory that we were learning in that class and, and, and really see how, how it comes out in the real world and you know, how other places have actually um, implemented these ideas. Uh, the other phases, um, so the, the second one, the case studies, was the one that was done in the, the 3350 class. Um, the next ones are um, 
done by, I guess, the research group, but myself in particular, um, part of the, I think it's the interesting part for me uh, was that I got to do RA work, um, and in particular with um, the third, uh, the, the third phase of that uh, development of the web-based engagement tool. So that's what I'm going to talk a little bit about here now. Um, so uh, up here is um, just the, the home page of, of the website that, um, uh, that we're using. And basically, the main things that we're doing with it is um, uh, using it to to uh, to host first of all a, a land use survey. Um, actually, you, you can see uh, on that image there's the, the link up there land, for the land use survey. So it's uh, that's uh, it's up there now. And um, um, so me as uh, as part of my work continuing with this project was to uh, set all this stuff up. Um, which is interesting, uh, I find it really interesting uh, because, I mean, until you really get to do this research, which um, at the undergraduate level doesn't necessarily happen uh, that frequently that we get to do uh, and be involved in primary research, I guess, like this. So I get to really see how, what goes into, you know, putting up a survey, it's not, you know, someone's got to do it and, you know, what goes into to the questions and that kind of thing. So it's really the nitty gritty and the, uh, the behind the scenes aspect of research. Um, I find it really interesting. Uh, the other aspect, of, uh, the other thing that we're using on the website is um, um, a uh, crowdsourced map, um, which is the second image there comes from that, which is basically where um, community members or anyone at all really can go in and um, um, submit uh, what uh, what they might see as issues uh, for land use in, in the region, and and just point put at a specific place. So it's really um, as geographers, I guess, to look at the spatial dimension of uh, of these issues. Um, so for me, I guess personally. Um, it's it's a great opportunity, like I said before, to learn more about research and and uh, more practical applications of some of these theories that I'm learning about. Um, it's also at the end of the day, I mean, I'll have contributed to um, you know a, a land use plan that will be hopefully used and implemented. So it's a uh, it's a way to be involved in in the community and uh, really see how. Uh, some of these things I'm learning about can make a difference in, in people's lives. And I think with that, I'll uh, pass it back the other way. I really felt that it would be best for you to hear from students who had been through these courses and participated in the projects, their experience, uh, rather than, than just hear it from myself. So, so uh, thank you for that. Um, I'll just sort of try to conclude. Um, in terms of, I wanted to think a little bit about the, both the benefits and the challenges of uh, trying to integrate engagement into the classroom. Um, for students, in terms of the benefits we've heard, it's learning that sticks is the way that Jennifer and I talked about it, uh, thinking about the, how these ideas apply. Uh, there's also career and future research, graduate work skills and knowledge that, that obviously students take away that they can use in their future careers and research. Um, but for faculty, it's also a way to integrate your research, teaching, and service, the, the parts of our job. And uh, clearly, this, this work feeds into my own research agenda, as well as to my teaching. Um, but, and I think it's been a valuable experience for all. So it's uh, not just selfish, but uh, mutually beneficial. <laughs> um, and we get, get to collectively be part of creating meaningful research relationships and outputs. Um, and for the partners, obviously, there's expertise that comes from the university uh, assistance. It's a way to get their voice out there uh, in documents that are often, uh, their story is told in a way it's often not. And uh, the partners that we worked with also found it very inspirational to work with students. I generally find that people are quite excited to be able to work with students and work with young people in our province to, to address their issues. 
Uh, but there are lots of challenges as well, and, I, and I'm going to pass the floor over uh, shortly to Jennifer again. So, uh, but I do uh, th think we could have a conversation about some of the challenges of trying to incorporate engagement into the classroom. Uh, it really takes a lot of commitment and extra time and energy from everyone involved, uh, from the students who uh, may not have may find it difficult to create time in their schedules for this kind of uh, extra work. It's not something you can do the night before. For, for instructors who need to uh, make sure the work is uh, really done to a level of quality that, you're, that everyone's happy to, to send out there to, to the partners and to the, the broader world. Um, and of course there are issues about whether or not that extra time and investment uh, is recognized in the university community. Uh, certainly partners uh, sometimes don't understand uh, the way the university works and our incentives and the way class structures work, the time, student may time that students may have available. Um, and also we don't always have the spaces on campus actually. And it's quite important to be able to reach out to partners in, in rural Newfoundland and elsewhere through video conference and those kinds of uh, technologies. And, and many of our departments may not be well set up for that kind of engagement. And, and we need assistance from, from the services that are available on campus with that. And, and I know that there certainly are services through distance learning and through Jennifer's office. And uh, one of the things I said in, in speaking with her is that I, I wish I had known more about their office. Uh, I, I did proceed, have proceeded on my own. I think we've done fairly well but certainly could have had help as Kelly said you can do it all by yourself or you can use some of the resources that are available to you here on campus um, and some of those involve I mean if you're in this room you're interested in bringing your curriculum to life you're interested in engaging with the community engaging your students and bringing them to a different level uh, and, and i think just being here and, and getting this awareness is already gonna i think impact on the students that are at memorial and you'll be known as the best professors and everyone will be fighting to get into your courses i really believe that uh, and so some of the things that we can help with uh, you may even have the the partners already in mind but if you don't maybe you you're you're just exploring this idea uh, start the dialogue with us we can tell you we have a, a relationships with a number of partners already maybe we have existing partners that you can work with maybe you have your own partner and we can give you some of the supports below um, that are listed here so we can actually come in and talk to your students we can help facilitate reflection we can train uh, maybe your, your your TAs or yourselves in reflection techniques the tools that we use we've gone to you know done lots of PD on this and, and tried to become our own little experts in this area, uh, designing the projects, I mean risk management depending on what you want to do, I know it would scare a lot of people away, can you take students off campus, what does that mean, uh, what are the risks associated with it, well we do that every midterm break, so we can help you with some of those logistical things. Providing resources on related topics, evaluating the experience, um, and then again like I said the reflection and the tools that are available. So. We just want you to, to know that there are resources, there are people here. We've just started a great dialogue with a, a professor in engineering who really wants to you know, get the engineers out there and learn to be civically engaged and be excited and recognize that what they do has, has, is very important and the ethics around it. And, and we think we can create programming that will, will expand the mind. Uh, some of the make midterm uh, matter events, I mean, I, I came in for the reflection piece in the fall and we had a number of events in the fall and it was a beautiful, beautiful day which always helps. So we had a beach clean up and we had OceanNet come in and, and, and recon help us reconstruct the beaches out in, um, outside of St. John's that, you know, there's a lot of uh, fire pits and that and it, talk about the sustainability and different things around our oceans. Uh, we had a group that went to the SPCA and I remember the young woman, she just looked at me and she said, do you know how many cats a female cat can have if they're not fixed? And I said, I honestly don't, I know it's a lot. And she went on with all the stats and she said, do you know that they don't get a lot of funding from government and they have to fundraise every dollar? What I saw from my very brief conversation with her, and I wasn't doing reflection, this was her reflecting on the experience and just having a chat, was she was becoming aware, first of all, of being a responsible animal owner uh, and the impact it can have on our environment if animals are, are not taken care of. Nonprofit the struggle for nonprofit organizations to exist when there are when they don't have a whole lot of support from government agencies and they have to fundraise and the passion people have for the things that they are committed to and i could see her 
that day having been exposed to something that she had never been exposed to before. Just like me going to daybreak and being exposed to uh, a different world than I had been, uh, than I had grown up in. So I, it's so powerful. As you all know, you've had those students where the, you can see the learning. You can see the wheels turning. And I think she's probably going back to volunteer with that agency. Uh, if not, she's going to take care of her animals when she does have them or whatever the case may be. But that's, we're changing people. We're changing changing young people in the constructs of their own lives and, and they take from that then and, and evolve into the people that they become. They become civically engaged, they become aware. Um, and that's what university is all about. We're supposed to challenge them. And I know that it must be challenging to add these things to your classes, uh, you know, to add a, a part of your midterm break or to add a, a street reach to go volunteer so many hours. And the students will complain when they're doing them. But my experience is that they also say it was the richest experience after it's over because they were pushed and they were challenged. And we've all had those teachers that at the time you're thinking you're killing me. But after you go, I love that person. They, I learned so much. You know, so I think that's the piece that we, it's okay to challenge. And I think we can accommodate students. Uh, and in some cases, you know, it's an option as part of the course to do this for marks instead of maybe doing the written assignment or whatever the case may be. So you can be creative into how you introduce this into the class. And maybe at some point, everyone will want to do it because the learning is so rich. So there are resources. The Career Center is there. Um, that experiential piece, I think, is critical to career. That's my passion. Uh, and we have people there to help you figure this out if you want to do this in your classroom. And, and if you want to be a, a renegade and lead the pack like Kelly and do this on your own, that's wonderful because your students are still going to benefit. But just know that there are some people around who can help provide some services to help engage the community, engage the student, and bring the two together. Lots of ideas. I could stand here all day and spit out ideas for almost every discipline that you teach. And uh, I really believe that it makes a big difference. And I think we're at the point of um, questions and answers. Uh, but what I will do over the next 20 minutes is um, just bring up some testimonials. I didn't have students to bring. So we've just, um, I've got four or five slide with slides with testimonials that as we're going through the discussion in the next 20 minutes, I'll just change them every five minutes. And you can see some of the comments um, that students have had through um, the experiences they've had with our department and in the classroom. 